if you would, go with me to First Chronicles, chapter 28. First Chronicles, chapter 28. And we want to look at the 20th verse. The 20th verse. <coughs> Will you have it? Say amen. amen. This is the same passage of scripture I preached from for our first service last year. It is also one of the scriptures that God gave me when he told me to start LLWC. And David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Until thou hast finished all the works for the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man, for any manner of service. Also the princes and all the people will be holy at thy command. Amen. Subject this morning. Celebrate, but don't trip. We still got work to do. Amen. Celebrate, but don't trip. We still have work to do. Amen. One of the most vulnerable and dangerous times of our lives is a time of celebration. Celebration denotes reaching a milestone. Completing a task, achieving a success. But when you do that, there's a danger because the enemy wants to cause your celebration to turn into retirement, pride, and complacency. See, when you get to celebrate a celebration, a achievement like we have, there's a tendency to say, well, we, we've done enough. We worked hard enough. Time for somebody else to come. Let me just sit back and let somebody else do the work. And this is not time for retirement. When celebration comes, sometimes we get the prideful look, you know. Look what I've done, look what I've done, and I don't, do the, I don't need to do anything else. Some rest of y'all need to pick this up. We get complacent because we, it looks like everything has been accomplished and we don't need to move with the same pace, with the same energy, with the same uh, vigor that we did before. That's the danger of celebration. Mm -hmm. Not that you don't want to celebrate, but you don't want to fall into the danger of retirement, pride, and complacency. Yes. You want your celebration to be a celebration, but you want to keep on moving. So yes, we want to celebrate, but we don't want to trip because we're not finished yet. Mm. This morning, if I could stand in the office of a prophet, I need to declare some things unto you that God has done for us this year and what he wants to continue to do for us. First of all, we need to know that this one year mark is just the beginning. We're transitioning from one stage to another, yes, we have done some great things. Well, God has done some great things to us, and we'll hit some milestones. But this is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. Don't look at it as an ending. Look at it as another fresh start. Look at it as a promotion at a new job. Look at it as an opportunity. Hey, it's time to get fresh. It's time to get remotivated. It's time to, hey, I can, what I didn't do last year, I can do this year. Whatever I failed in last year, I can accomplish this year. Look at it as this is my new beginning. Uh -huh. The old things are behind. That's 
Well, and yes, I want to celebrate the accomplishment, but I can't live in the accomplishment because if I live in the accomplishment, I'll never accomplish anything else. Mm. So yes, we're going to take the day and we're going to celebrate. And I may even celebrate Thursday, but Sunday morning, that's going to be back hitting it again. Yeah. Because we'll be in a new year, yeah. a new beginning, and new things have to be accomplished. And there are more of you who need to walk through the door. You remember when you first walked in the door? Mm. You remember how you were? Well, maybe some of you are still that way. But well, you remember how you were? Go ahead. But you remember what God has done for you, the time period you've been here? Yeah. Whether you've been here the whole year, 30 days, 60 days, 6 months, whatever it may be, you know what God has done for you for the time period you've been here? There's some more like you. There's some others who's worse off than you. And I need your energy, I need your motivation to help bring them in the door. And just as God transformed your life, he wants to transform their lives. Mm, yes. So yes, we're going to take a minute to celebrate. Thank God for all that he's done. But then we're going to press towards the mark of the high order. And look towards him doing some more great things in the upcoming year. Yes, God. Second thing I want to declare unto you, that last year, Last year, I preached that message, yes, I can, and yes, we will. Yes, sir. Well, guess what? We did it. Uh -huh. I can borrow it from door. We did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> but in doing that, God let me know, I wanted to show you that through me, you can do anything. Mm. Maybe we didn't grow as fast as we wanted to because God wanted to show you if you just trust me, look what I do with a few. Ah, yes. Maybe someone that you wanted to come in didn't come in because God wanted to show you all you need to do is trust me because I'm preparing you for something. See, last year was to build our confidence. Last year was to show us we can do anything if we put our minds to it. But next year is to go to the next step and accomplish it. Yes. So this year, for a lot of us, God was proving himself to us, letting, him, letting us know he is faithful to do whatever we need him to do. And if we come together on one accord, there's nothing that can stop LLWC. Oh, my God. Amen. And if we put our mind to it, we can take the whole neighborhood. And once you take the neighborhood, you can take the city. My God. Go ahead, sir. But he had to prove to us that we're just what you got. I can allow you to accomplish so much. Uh -huh. Do you know we have 11 <coughs> working ministries and all citizens in here? It would be surprised look at that. We have 11. And we're doing retreats for our young people. One this year, one happened to happen next week, and two coming up next year for our uh, young men and our young women. And what we did for this year for our young men. God allowed us to do that. Because he wanted to show us, if you trust me, if you believe in me, if you come on one accord, I'll do things that big churches ain't doing. Uh, my God. Because many times you can't come to a tree and don't have to register. I mean register financially. Uh -huh. But it wasn't a financial registration for our young people. And what we're doing this afternoon with the anniversary, you couldn't go there and just get to buy a ticket. But we're saying come. If you're a part of it, you got a guest, come. The church is going to take care of it. Many big churches are doing that. Why? Not that we're trying to pat ourselves on the back. I'm trying to pat my God on the back. Uh, yeah. And he's trying to show us what we can do if we trust him. Yeah. So it was a year of preparation. It was a year of letting us know if we trust him, if we depend on him, we can do it. So he used that year to build our confidence. Mm. I wish I could give you the theme for next year, but I gotta wait. Gotta wait. But it's preparing us for what God wants us to do. So yes, it was a rough year for some of you. But I challenged some of you. God gave me messages to challenge your character, to challenge your faith, and went back into your past and digged up some things that you didn't want to dig up. Some of you had to get back to the place that you were at before. You kind of lost your zeal, lost your motivation, and God used me to bring you back to a point where you're back on fire for Him. So yes, it was a rough year. But God was getting you ready 
for what he wants to do That's right. next year. Yes. If we would, let's go back to our text. I want to show you something in our text. As I told you, this is a text that I used last year. But this is a text in 2009, in October 2009, in early morning prayer. God told me, read this text. I read it. And he said, I told you I need you to start this church. See, I, I had heard him in the whisper, but he had to say it to me in his written word. I heard him in the whisper. And I said, okay, God, I know you're saying, but you ain't said it. Point blank to me. Yeah. From that point, he said, okay, you did it. Point blank. Here you go. Right here in black and white. Go ahead, go ahead. And 13 months later, LLWC was born. But look what he said. That and David said to Solomon, be strong and of good courage and do it. Next year is just a time, just do it. Uh, We're prepared for it this year, but next year, just do it. Your faith is already there. You already know you got the gift on the inside. God has worked on your character. He's worked on your personality. He's still working on some of you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But in the midst of you just doing it, he's going to build your character some more. He's going to build your personality some more. So remember next year, from this day on, it's going to be just do it. Mm -hmm. yes. God said just do it. Look what he says here. He says, he says do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will never fail. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. I'm here to tell you this morning, we are not finished. Yes. We are not finished. As I was preparing this message, I couldn't help but think about Brother Mike Butler. Some of y'all know that Brother Mike was homeless, and we didn't know he was homeless, and he came here, and he joined. Matter of fact, helped us build the floor, but then I have a personality of being homeless. Yes. And God blessed him. And his family came down and said, you can't keep living like this. You got to come on back home when you have a home, when you do it. Circumstance made him homeless. But I preached the message and he said, Pastor, I heard your message. He said, well, my decisions that got me this way. I made the wrong decision, that's what got me this way. But on the bus, on the way back to home, before the bus left, he called and said, Pastor, I need you to pray for me that I will be ready for God is preparing for me when I get back home. And I told Brother Mike, this short time you've been with us is getting you ready for what you need to do in your family because you're going to be the only light in that family. If we had not been here, if we had not been in this spot right here, we would not have touched that life. Because on a Thursday night, he's riding his bike. The first lady said, why don't y'all come to church? And he said, well, I ain't doing nothing else. <laughs> and from that Thursday night, he kept on coming. God has more brother minds for us to touch. Mm -hmm. God got more you for us to touch. I'm reminded of Sister Irene's sister, when she, before she became a partner here, I talked to her, and right before she joined, she said, no, I've been searching, I've been searching. I said, well, how long have you been searching for a church? For 10 years? I said, what you been doing? Well, I just stopped searching. Okay. <laughs> but we were here, and now she's not searching. She got a place. She has a home. She's a partner here. <laughs> we got more of them. You know my heartbeat. My heartbeat is I'm going after those who are not going anywhere. If God sends them from another church, that's fine. But I'm not going after you. But if you're not going anywhere, you are my prime target. Because if you're not going anywhere, you might as well come here. Yeah, oh, my God, I can't get no help here. If you ain't going anywhere, you might as well come here. If you've been disappointed, if you've been hurt, if you've been broken, if you've been messed up, you've been church hurt, just come join the rest of us. We're in that same category. Just come on and get in the family. We all So you know my talking, if you ain't going nowhere, I want, to, I want to find you and help you go somewhere. But I believe we are the place for you. And then if we're not, we'll help you find a place where you need to go. So God is getting us ready because we have more of them that are to come. So the scripture says, until thou hast finished all the work, we're not finished yet. <laughs> we're not finished yet. We got more work to do. This scripture said that God will be with thee. He will never forsake thee. He will never 
leave thee. Yes, that scripture gives me comfort that no matter what I do, he'll be with me. But on the flip side of that scripture, God let me know this morning, my hand is going to be on you until you get finished with what I want you to do. Uh huh. So you say, Pastor, let's do it again. Well, don't say, Pastor, let's do it again. Because God's hand is on my back and he keeps pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. Because we may take a 10 minute break, but we're not going to stop working. Uh, yes. We're going to be like we're running a marathon. You may sit down and say, can I take a break? I'll take five minutes. Okay. Oh, now get back up. We got to run some more. <laughs> uh, my God, my God. Because the minute we stop working is the minute they need to roll us down in the casket. Because we have finished our course. That's right. But as long as we're still living, God's requiring us to work. And he's going to give us milestones like today to celebrate to let us look back at what he's done. But when we look back at what he's done, it gives us anticipation. What is he about to do? Because if you did all that back then, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in my future. Because God got a way of always outdoing himself. Yes, so every time yes, I look yes. at the back of what he's done, I said, wow, God, if you did it that great back then, I can't wait to see how good you're going to be in the future. Yes. You don't like doing it the same way you always like And when you get in the word, you can't help. 
idea of how he is telling the truth. Life change. He want to teach you to new levels and new heights. So yes, we are in the midst of great celebration. But it's not over yet. Mm. We have a lot more to do. Yes. We got some more skillful workers who's coming mm. to help us accomplish what God has called us to do. Thursday night, y'all told me what you see your church doing next year, where you see your church at, and what you're willing to do. And I was just so encouraged to hear everything that you said and all the things that you want to do. Because it remind me as I close with this scripture, Nehemiah said that they are building the wall and putting it back together because the people have a mind to work. But when you read it in the Amplified, I like the Amplified a little bit better than this particular scripture. When you read it in the Amplified, it says they have a heart and a mind to work. Why are you here? Because you got a heart. And a mind to work. Say mm. Why are you coming here, 25th Street, in the hood, on Sunday morning? And you walk in and say, Why, why am I here? Because you got a heart and a mind to work. You can hide in a big cathedral where nobody would know your name and you wouldn't have to do nothing. But God has to put that in your heart because you want to work. And the thing about the people who God has given and to LLWC is that you want to see your church at a new level. Yes. You want to see your church at new heights. Yes. And many of you have in your mind, if that church is doing it, why can't we do it? Yes. And you ain't really looking at the side. You're like, why can't we do it? Yes. And when God can take a people who have a heart and a mind to work, he'll take them and let them accomplish so great things because he will get the glory. Yes. 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 So the things we do, not about us, not for us to get the glory, not for us to be power back, but the things we do here is so God can get the glory. But how does he get the glory? He gets the glory through ministry. Yes. When we're touching a life, when we're turning things around. And when I say touch a life, I don't necessarily mean just the sinner. There's some saints' lives who are jacked up and messed up, and they like, their lives need to be touched. Yes. So it's not just the sinner, but he wants to touch lives all over. And I dare you to consider it a privilege <clears throat> that he put you in a place and in a position to work and touch lives. Yes. No greater thing is it. Jesus told the disciples they wouldn't give them something to eat. And after they left, the woman at the well came and he dealt with her. And after he dealt with her, they came back. They said, we got food to eat. And Jesus said, my food is to do the will of my father. And they thought somebody had fed him. No, he was saying there's no greater fulfilling than to do what God has called me to do. And I'm here to tell you this morning, there's no greater fulfilling for you than to accomplish what God has called you to do. You can try to reach it in other things. You can try drugs. You can try alcohol. You can try women. You can try any other things, but you won't find the fulfillment that you need only in doing the will of God. It's more than just salvation. I know some people teach just being fulfilled. It's more than salvation. Salvation will get you to heaven. But when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, would you get in the crown? Mm. And the Bible declares there should be gnashing and crying because of the crown, people are not going to receive because they have not done what God called them to do. Yes. So it's not just salvation. You got enough people just sitting on pews. It's not just salvation. 
It's about what is God calling me to do to be a blessing to somebody else. And in the midst of being a blessing to somebody else, God blesses me. Mm, yes. mm -hmm. You'll find no greater joy. You'll find no greater satisfaction. And God will do you like he did Paul. When he know he can trust you. When he know he can use you. He'll put you before kings. He'll put you before rulers. He'll put you before influential, influential people. Because he knows. You'll do what he called you to do. You don't have this high status in society. But he'll bring you before kings. Just so you can give them a word from him. That's what we're about. That's LLWC. That's what God has called us to do. That's why we've been here a year. And that's why we'll be here many, many, many years to come. Because our focus will not change. It's not about show. It's not about hype. It's not about tuning up and putting my hand behind my ear and I can do all that. It's not about that. It's about touching God's people where they are, taking them to a new level, and then let them take that and reach somebody else. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And each, if each one of us reach one, how many people will we reach? Yes. But you can't reach one until God has gotten you in order. And that's what he's done for us this year. He's gotten us in order. Yes. We got a few more days before 2012 comes in. But I'm here to declare to you, as the pastor of this house, 2012 will be off the hook. Because we're going to be doing things God has called us to do. Yes. I heard him now. Yes. If he can trust you, he'll put it in your hand. Uh, and what he put in your hand will not only bless somebody else, but it's going to bless you. So we're here now. We're going to celebrate one year. But don't trip. Don't trip. Because we ain't finished yet. Rest to your feet on the My God. My God. Good, good, good.